So, hey everybody, we're back. We Hi. took a little break, switched videos on you, but uh, I already see there's quite a few people joined. That's fantastic. Uh, let's jump right in and meet uh, the, uh, the guys who are going to lead the next mini workshop. They're from uh, Stuart Feldman from Review Studio and Spencer, uh, was it Rand, from Cicada Design. How are y'all today? Hey. Hi, are Hi. we on? <laughs> yeah, I think yes, we're on now. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure we're on. I know you're on. Okay, cool. Yeah, Hi. you guys are on now. Can we Great. hear the audio of Spencer? Yeah. Spencer, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning, everybody. Okay, okay. perfect. Hi. Great. It's a pleasure Good. to be here. Okay, okay. so uh, we're very I'm... excited to have you here. Yes. We're not going to steal any more of your time. We're going to give you the virtual right. stage. And if you need anything, we're going to stick around. So just give us a shout and we'll Thanks. be here watching. We'll be here. Yep. So, so right. take it away. OK. okay. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's uh, great to meet everybody. Nice to have this opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Stuart Feldman. I'm with Review Studio. And uh, I'm in Montreal. And over in Toronto is Spencer Rand from Cicada. Cicada is, uh, well, they're one of the top Canadian visualization agencies uh, and uh, also being one of our customers for a long time. So it's uh, nice to have this opportunity to kind of talk about it. And I know this week, um, I know this week you've all been uh, seeing some pretty amazing demonstrations, talks about different creative techniques. And uh, so I just first I just wanted to say uh, for this workshop I know there's like two hours allocated but uh, we're not going to take all two hours I think we'll be able to kind of cover what we want to talk about probably in, within about an hour but we'll have time for questions as well if if that's possible um, so uh, just to get things going uh, as I was saying I know you've been watching a lot of uh, great creative presentations and. Uh, ultimately, that is what we all really love to do, is uh, being creative, creating amazing content. Uh, I know, uh, um, so in today's talk, you know, we're going to be talking about something, I guess, somewhat more mundane, but equally important, which is really about how to run a very effective practice. Uh, and, uh, you know, the more effective, the more efficient you can run your studio and your agency, uh, basically, you know, the more time you have to be creative and the more time you have to do the things that you're really good at, the things you like to do, the things that really differentiate you. So um, Review Studio now, we've been around, uh, well, since 2014. I guess currently we, we probably work with about 500 different agencies and studios. And uh, what we do is basically a process called online proofing, which sounds a bit uh, old school, proofing. Uh, the idea of proofing really does kind of hark back to the idea of, of printing presses, uh, where in the old days in the 15th century, when presses started, uh, they would have to uh, run off a couple uh, proofs to see that things were working properly. Uh, but it really relates to that whole notion of review and approval, which is really uh, at the essence of what you do, which is the essence of a studio. Uh, it's an iterative process. You're working with teams. You're working with um, your clients, often in many different locations. And really being able to run an efficient process for reviews and approvals is kind of core to keeping projects running smoothly. And actually, uh, so Spencer, um, I did a, a demo uh, yesterday for a customer, and I, I thought it was pretty funny. I, I want to play this uh, audio clip. It's just a, whenever I start to talk with a potential new customer about uh, Review Studio, it's always, you know, I always sort of ask, well, you know, wh why did you come to us? What were you, you know, what, what were the problems you were facing? So I'm going to play this short clip because I, I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, well, I think I'm going to play this short. Maybe clip. to get started, you could okay. fill me in a bit on uh, what, how you found us, and and uh, a little bit about your specific circumstances. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I'm trying to mute the dog and talk to you. Oh. Uh, 
We are a video production company that has a very large client in Ireland. And so we just did a massive project for them where we did five and a half hours of scripted content. And it was the jankiest piecemeal Vimeo SharePoint spreadsheet cluster F and ever see. We're always looking at each other like, does anybody know where anything is? Do we know where anything is? We were losing audio. We were losing massive chunks of video. We <laughs> were losing stuff right. all over the place. And we were like, what is happening? Uh, you know, we gave them a certain amount of notes, rounds of notes. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to have two, and it ended up being five plus two. Lock, lock, something would be locked, and then we'd be in picture lock five. And I'm like, right. somebody's missing the point of picture lock here, people, because you're not in a picture lock five. Picture lock is locked. Right. Uh, the first thing that I said that as we got out of that one, we're now starting up a much smaller version of that, and this is an hour and a half of content. And in doing so, I told them, I am taking you out of your file share addiction by dropping literally 150 stock footage files in, a, in like a Dropbox and going, figure it out because you can't find thumbnails, we don't know what anything is. And we're going to find platforms that are going to streamline everything so that everybody can collaborate because I would get 20 rounds of notes, the same note from yep. 20 people. Yep. It took us, you know, we had to hire somebody just to just to wrangle the notes, which is a ridiculous amount of waste of time. Just a waste of time. Right. So there you go. I I, I could not have expressed that better. And and I've done, well, I've probably done hundreds of of uh, demos with different agencies and different studios. And always, you know, there's some kind of variation of that theme. That you know, you're working with a team. You're working with producers. You're working with people, clients all over the place. And you know everything is just sort of siloed in different communication, uh, you know, channels, and things are getting lost, and instructions are getting lost, and things are, you know, yeah. Basically, the whole process is creating so much friction uh, between the clients and the producers and the team that it just, you know, it it just makes it very inefficient. And 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 really, you know, you're working with these very tight. Uh, budgets. You're working under very tight timelines, uh, and you're trying to do like a great. You know, you want to do great creative. You want to do the best job. So you know, you don't, you know, really want to deal with that kind of uh, pain of 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 having to chase things and track things. So that you know, and 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 my background actually uh, was in production. I you know worked. I had a company called Lightscape, which was a rendering. I worked at Autodesk for many years, so I've been working with a lot of production studios. We we understood this uh, this pain point very well, and so you know, in developing a review studio, which we call online proofing, really a way to provide a, a, a streamlined way for organizing your content, for presenting your content, for collecting the feedback. So um, what I'd like to do, and what we'll do in this uh, workshop, is I want to sort of show you. How that works, uh, and 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 the idea of what online proofing is, and and basically how we've implemented it uh, with Review Studio, and then in the second part, Spencer can come in and talk a little bit more about workflows and 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 basically how they're using it in their studio, uh, kind of more uh, real world case. Because uh, so let's um, let me share my screen now. I've been talking too much. All right. Here we go. Is that showing up all right, Spencer? Yeah, it looks looks good. Okay, so this is actually a project that Cicada did in uh, Montreal, which I like to show because it's a, a new symphony hall that was built here, a beautiful building by uh, Jack uh, Diamond Schmidt in uh, Toronto. So I always like to highlight some local content. Um, so. In the idea, uh, I guess where I'm starting this review, where I'm starting this demo, is basically in what we call a review. So the idea of a review is that you can basically collect the content that you need to get feedback on, that you're the content that you're developing. Uh, and and where I'm starting here is what we call the review canvas. So what you can do is you know you're you're going to upload the stills, you're going to create this review. The review can consist of multiple. Uh, files, multiple images, image, you know, videos that you want to have reviewed together. 
So you basically create a review. And I guess what you'll see right away, um, and I, you know, a lot of people do work with other project management applications, you know, things like Trello, Asana, Monday, there's like a lot of different project management applications and they kind of have a place, but where they break down is, you know, um, they're not, you know, they're, they're really designed for sort of generic projects. Uh, you know, the, the focus in a project management system tends to be the tasks, the milestones, the content itself is really, you know, added as attachments. Um, when you're dealing in our profession, when you're dealing with visual media, uh, what we do is kind of invert the process. So we want to put the content really at the center of the discussion. And, and that's what makes it so much more effective. Um, because you're really focusing everything around the content itself, the work that you're doing. So generally, uh, as I was explaining, you would uh, create the review, uh, you would upload these files, then you would you know, basically share your files with um, different team members. Uh, at the time, you would share the files. Uh, we, you know, I'm not going to get in now talking about the different roles, but you could share with the different collaborators, and then... Um, you can also indicate what, when you're sharing if you want that person to be an approver or not. So when you upload these files, if there's somebody who needs to approve uh, the files that you're developing, you could set them up as an approver. And then above each of the files, each of the files in the review, they have this option, approve yes or no, very straightforward. Um, and they would have to do that on each of the files. If you're not set up as an approver, you wouldn't see that interface. So of course, you know the content itself you can you know, zoom in, scroll, pan, as you would expect. It's a, a dynamic environment. And then you provide you know, all the tools here for doing markup. So if your you know, client can come in, start adding feedback on here, too many words. So um, you'll notice uh, here, oh. Okay, so then I can, uh, you know, different tools. If I didn't want to draw something, just point to something. I could say, you know, wrong. Um, I, you know, there's different shapes. Sometimes you have um, more complex uh, annotations. So I can grab the circle. I could say, draw more, you know, then start drawing. Uh, move uh, this sign to here. Um, let's see, I can add one more uh, circle up here, add trees like this image. So um, one of the features of, uh, an, of a, uh, oh, hold on. I just have to make one change here. Got to go to settings. Sorry about this. Have to be able to change the com, change the review time. Go back to that review. There we go. So uh, you'll notice here. Uh, this is the change I just made. That by default, when you add comments, we give ninety minutes. So the idea here is, if a client is reviewing, uh, is reviewing the image. Uh, or let's say they're reviewing a lot of images or a very long you know, video or a set of video clips, there's 90 minutes by default where they can delete a comment, they can edit a comment, but after the 90 minutes, uh, that comment locks. So that way, um, you know, your client can't go back three days after you've made some changes and go back and you know, edit one of their instructions that they've given you. So um, one of the things I wanted to show here, you can have attachments with a comment as well. So if I attach a file, um, and I'll just select like some roof trees. So here, if I wanted to provide a, a reference image, um, you know, add trees like this image, and these attachments can really be any asset. It can be a design file. It might be an AutoCAD drawing, uh, anything that you know is re relevant to the particular uh, comment. So as you add these comments, uh, each of the comments really is a discussion thread. So any of the people you're working with can reply to a comment. Uh, when I reply, if I want to, I can direct the comment to somebody specific. Um, 
you know, here. So you can see what that does is it's indicating that, you know, the comment, and it also triggers an email to that person. So they'll get an immediate notification that there's a question. Uh, in that notification, there's a link that'll take them directly to the comments so they can see it in context. So again, that sort of gets back to the idea that all of these, all this feedback, all this discussion is happening around the content. Um, and, and basically you can see here as I've started to add a lot of um, comments on this image, it does start to get a little bit confusing. You can collapse all the comments at the top of the comment bar and then just kind of cycle through them one at a time, isolate each one to, to view it that way. So another part, you know, another benefit here to working in a review is that you can have different types of content. So if I look at a video, for example, um, you know, it's the same UI. So basically, uh, and, and, and again, this is always part of the uh, issue when you're dealing with clients, do they have the tools to be able to provide a feed, you know, to provide feedback effectively. So I still see, you know, a lot of clients just printing out images and, you know, taking pencils and marking them up and scanning them and sending them back as email attachments. And, you know, just, you know, if they're working on videos, so you have all of these different uh, channels going on and it's, it's hard, you know, often for a client to be able to provide effective feedback. So again, just sort of providing a very uh, consistent experience to the client to be able to provide feedback quickly and effectively and concisely. So if they're if they want to view this video, um, that will wake you up. Uh, and then again, I you know I can take uh, uh, can add a comment directly on the video frame. So add logos here. Um, and you can see as I add comments on the frames, they get marked on the timeline as well. So I can just, you know, advance to frames that have comments on them. I can also just click in the comment bar here to uh, take me to a frame that has comments. And at the top of the comment bar as well, you can sort the comments by time code or by chrono chronologically, or I can filter the comments just from different users or, uh, you know, just to show um, tasks. We'll I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and uh, one second. And uh, other content like um, working with PDF files. So again, uh, I know a lot of uh, agencies now, I mean, you're not just working in uh, computer graphics. Uh, a lot of uh, like Cicada are, you know, really becoming more full service agencies, marketing agencies. So you're dealing with uh, also, you know, PDF document branding websites. Uh, and again, that's the nice thing about working in the review. You can, you know, you can just upload any type of content, uh, PDF files if you're doing, you know, brochures. Um, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, um, copy or, you know, items that have copy in them, we have these text tools that you can activate. So, you know, you can highlight text. Um, and, you know, these are sort of the standard Adobe-like types of tools that you would get for, uh, you know, cross out and markup. Um, but it's the same experience. It's the same idea, just like with the video. At the bottom, we have this index bar, and I can just jump to pages that have comments. Or I click in the comment bar on a comment, and it's going to take me to that page. So again, that's the idea, just keeping everything really simple, really unified together. Um, you know, working with web content as well. So we have the option of uploading HTML pages or doing screen grabs automatically of different URLs um, and, and adding those to the review. So in a typical process, uh, you would be, uh, you know, distributing this, uh, distributing your images uh, to, you know, for feedback from uh, whoever you need approvals from. Uh, after you know the person's approved or not, indicating that they're finished, um, you can then, as they, as the uh, project manager, uh, go through all of these comments, and you know somebody's going to decide. Well, are are we going to make these changes or not? So at that point, you can actually turn uh, feedback into some sort of actionable task. And if you want to, you can assign it as a task to somebody on the team. So you know maybe there's different uh, production people working on these on this content. So you could assign, uh, the director could assign 
specific tasks. And you'll see when, when something is set up as a task, it does put a color code on the comment. So that just color just indicates that, okay, this is a task. If the color is orange, that's a task for you. So when you log into this review, if you've been assigned a task, you can very quickly find you know, the work you have to do. And uh, again, just keeping that track. And then as you make the changes, as you finish the tasks, you can just you know, mark them as completed. You see how all of these uh, actions also have timestamps, so you can keep track. So one of the features here, uh, you see it turned green. So now I know, okay, this task was completed. Uh, the task workflow is really flexible. So anybody can really you know, re, you know, take over a task or reassign it. Um, one of the filters here is to just hide all the completed tasks. So for the artist, you know, if you have 50 changes to make on a, a set of images, the artist can go through and just sort of check these off as they're completed and they just drop off the list. Um, so that's kind of nice. Check complete, done. See, and then I can uh, see all the comments. So at that point, the designer or the artist can upload the new version. So the review contains not just sort of the original version, but it's also gonna contain all the subsequent revisions. So if I look at this image here, for example, up at the top, it says version two, and I can go back and I can see version one and I can see all the feedback that was made. I can see these uh, tasks were uh, implemented. Those changes were made. Uh, at this point, it's an early version, so I can't add any more feedback. You don't want your clients, you know, changing things from previous versions. But uh, you may, you know, want to be able for them to be able to see them. Uh, I think Spencer later is going to talk about some cases where you don't necessarily want that, but that's the flexibility you have. Um, so. At this point though, uh, if you keep it in the review, uh, there's a, a compare mode. So I could actually you know, put version you know, one on the right, version two on the left. I can look at them side by side. I can see the feedback. I can uh, you know, even synchronize the pan and zoom so I can sort of look in more detail uh, at the changes that are made. Um, and uh, Right, so, uh, and you have options here for also syncing navigation. So even if you're comparing two videos and you wanna play the two videos together to watch them side by side, you, you can do that or changing pages in a PDF. Um, so that way, you know, you can really kind of, again, the idea here is that everything related to the development of this project is in one place. Everybody's on the same page. Uh, you know, it, it's keeping all the feedback together. It's keeping, all the development together. Uh, and you know, that's really where you're just gonna streamline like that you know, person was talking about in that clip that I played. Uh, you know, the whole idea here is just to keep everybody together and keep the process really clean. Um, so you know, that, that's you know, just a description of how this review canvas works. Um, you know, uh, uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, we'll, you know, we'll turn this over to uh, Spencer and, uh, you know, the next part is, you know, how do you organ, how do you create these reviews, how do you organize them? Uh, and, and, you know, again, the platform provides some different options and different uh, studios and different agencies may work with it in different ways. So um, let me, uh, let's see, what do I do here? I can, uh, stop sharing and then Spencer you're there you can yeah I'm here I, I kind of want to am I echoing here I don't know if there's an opportunity you know to have a little break and ask questions and I'm not sure how that all works here or not um but uh let's yeah. see yeah oh okay Okay, now we, we'll just keep going. That's fine. I I have to stop share. Okay, and now I guess Spencer can take over. Yeah, so I guess I just wanted to reinforce. Oh. Not quite sure why. Does that sound any better? Is that any different? Okay. Um, yeah, so I just want to reinforce that we were lucky to kind of find Stuart uh, and, and Review Studio 
uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, so it was quite a, quite a new tool at the time. Um, and it's evolved quite a lot since then. Um, but we've used it extensively for just about everything. We, um, our studio started out kind of doing a lot of the 3D visualization for architecture. Um, and we, we work with a lot of architects this way and, and we'll post renders and they'll mark it up. Um, and then we've also been using it for branding and websites and um, pretty much everything, the, any visual content. Um, and it's been interesting because you start to learn um, how to structure your conversation with different client groups. Um, a lot of the architects like to get in the weeds and they really want to be creative and, and define a lot of the story and have very detailed feedback um, and aren't always coming to the meeting with everything they want to say. So we'll leave reviews open for a few days, um, let them input all of their feedback and say, by Friday, we're going to lock it down. But um, you don't have to put in your comments during business hours, especially during covid um, people have kids they want to deal with and do homeschooling all day. Um, and they may not get to doing comments until 10 PM. And I don't want to meet with them at 10 PM. I got my own things I want to do. So, um, we'll leave this, we'll leave it open and just say, you've got three days and, um, and then we'll send an email around and say, please confirm all comments have been made on this round because we're going to lock it down. Um, and that just helps us to kind of push a project along, structure a lot of that feedback um and and kind of uh you know control the scope of work because especially with uh designers they, they're going to want to revisit um a, a lot of the work right to the end and so uh they're still designing it and sometimes they're they're using our visuals in order to understand um what it is that they've even drawn um and they you know we're we're helping them see it in 3d and it sparks new ideas for them um so uh, I'm sure with any creative work, it just uh, it has a chance to kind of uh, get get lost in the weeds. So um, maybe I'll just uh, do a quick share here of um, just one one example of how you might um, kind of structure it differently. So uh, so here are two kind of architecture um, clients. Here we've got Diamond and Schmidt that. Uh, Stuart was talking on earlier, um, or HOK, and um, uh, for them, we'll tend to organize projects just by what the project is, because most of those deliverables are very finite. You have two months for uh, an RFP or another uh, proposal submission, and we can do iterations within the project and call that done. Um, so here we've got, if I open this, we can see some, um, some fun pictures. I'm a visual guy, I like to see some, <laughs> see some pictures. Um, so, um, so here's one, and as Stuart was saying, as you, as you start to annotate things, you can say, you know, smoke is too pink <laughs> or, or what have you. And it's, um, sorry, my screen is falling off the bottom here a little bit. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like you got the, you're kind of over the, there you go. It's a little better. Um, and then as you make those comments, they show up on the side and we can start to, uh, assign them to individuals, um, as, you know, as, as Stuart was, was showing there. Um, the other, the other way we'll do it is if it's a much larger, um, engagement, especially with a lot of the master plan projects that we get into. Um, you'll, you'll see individual deliverables can have um, iterations, like a website, for instance, especially with a, a long-term client where over the course of 10 years, you may start a website over from scratch. And so you can, um, you can start to have all of the, uh, the reviews in here, and we're not breaking out by the project anymore. We're now breaking out um, individual deliverables knowing that they'll have a number of iterations. So if we jump in here, we look at some of the stills for Lakeview. 
we have clients weighing in here. There's quite a few comments and sometimes you get inundated. You feel like there's too many comments and you can kind of collapse those on the side and start to work through those individually. Um, and, and as you advance through, um, it kind of calls out these, these things uh, one at a time. So you can, you can kind of uh, walk through it in different ways. Um, and I guess the other, so the other way that we use this is um, you may have a very detail oriented client that's easily distracted and you need to be very careful not to suggest things that, um, that can kind of distract them from, <laughs> from the path. Um, and there's, there's kind of, that happens both internally and externally with, with the client. Uh, of course, your creative team has a, tons of ideas and you know that the sooner you can kind of land on a creative vision, the more time you're going to have to produce that and get a higher quality product. So um, internally, sometimes we'll, we'll have these reviews in order to kind of storyboard and get everyone's um, get everyone to weigh in, especially now that everyone's at home. We're not having these board meetings anymore. And, you know, everyone's on phone calls all day long. And sometimes you're a passive participant on a phone call and you can go and look at something else. So you could be weighing in on this if you, you know, if you're just a, you know, just a passive, uh, in a passive meeting. Um, and then, so we'll, we'll do an internal review, get everyone's kind of creative thoughts on, on where, where a particular project could go. Um, and then we'll decide on a direction before taking it back to the client in order to say, this is our, this is our best idea. I don't want to table three ideas because oftentimes the client will choose the one that you didn't like that much. <laughs> and so the, you try, you know, you want to, you want to try and control what, um, what you're excited about, what you've seen, they've hired you to bring, you know, your best effort and your critical eye on what it is that's kind of contemporary and, and exciting. Um, but then uh, you also want to separate out the other ideas from, from the client side so that when you table it to them, um, they're, they're going to try and derail it in their own way. Um, and ultimately, you want them to be happy with, with where it goes. So you need to address what, um, you know, all the, all the feedback that they have. So um, as, we, as we work through here with a, with a very detail oriented client, often um, we'll post a, a set of reviews as its own link. Um, and- Open the uh, comment, open the comments. You wanna see the, wanna open the comments? So you can see all the all the comments populate, um, and so some you know sometimes we'll send just one link for one review, not to confuse it with previous reviews, because uh, especially when we get into the the executives, they they tend not to be uh, as tech savvy or interested in learning tools, even if it's a simple interface like this. They just have no time for it. So we'll uh, with them we'll structure a time a call. We'll set it in presentation mode so that everyone's looking at the same screen at the same time. And we'll actually go through and annotate this based on the phone call uh, and make sure that everything has been included so that they don't, they don't have to input all this, but they're part of that review process and can see that it's open to their feedback. Um, and then the, we can send the link back to them to say, if you have any other thoughts, feel free to add them, but understand that in order to stay on budget and on schedule, we're gonna lock this down in this time frame. Um, so yeah, I think one of the one of the early features that we really enjoyed was the um, was just like being able to tag comments in a timeline for things like videos um, because of the way that you can kind of advance kind of um, to the next comment uh, in the same way that we're seeing here where you can uh, show one comment individually. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the kind of gist of how, how we typically use it. Um, yeah, is there, I don't know if anyone has any questions about how, how this. Yeah, uh, I, I, mean, I, I, when you showed, when we were talking about it and you were uh, showing me what, what I thought was interesting, um, 
was really because because you developed sort of different approaches with uh, different clients. So like you said, like with some of the architects that you've been working with a long time, you know, you just keep everything in one review. Uh, with other clients, I thought it's interesting that you do kind of break it out. So each, basically each round kind of is a, is a separate review. So it's sort of like you, you didn't want the client to actually be able to go back and sort of see the previous version. I thought that was interesting that you just sort of wanted to pr present each round fresh so that they weren't sort of uh, uh, inclined to sort of start going back and looking at, like you just wanted to keep the thing moving forward. So I guess that's, you know, what's, what's important for us, I mean, just developing the tool is being able to support, you know, the flexibility to have those different workflows. So, you know, that there, there could be clients uh, that you want to be, you know, that you really want to be collaborating with, very involved, seeing all the internal uh, discussion uh, involved in the internal development. Uh, and then there's other clients, you know, and, and a lot of agencies work that way where it's a little more formal. They want to have a client review process, which is really separated from kind of the internal follow-up. So, you know, that's one of the workflows that is supported where you could uh, create create the review um, and then, you know, basically after you've collected feedback, you can kind of branch it off, you can separate it, uh, you know, stop sharing it with the client, develop it internally so the client doesn't see all the, uh, you know, all the great internal uh, deliberations that go on, basically then, you know, upload a new version back for the client, you know, without all that internal discussion. So it really, you know, supports you know, both those types of uh, flows. And, and sometimes, you know, it's just going to be like some clients you'll work one way and other clients, you know, you'll work a different way. So it's just, uh, you know, being able to have available, you know, that, that it can work. I thought also it was very interesting because uh, I, I didn't, I, I didn't mention that actually when I uh, <clears throat> did my part of the demo, but the ability to have that live uh, review, being able to present and take people through it and take notes together. So especially like these days where you, you know, you can't really just get together physically, uh, but you have that ability to um, you know, do the presentation. Yeah, like I guess I wanna say that it, it's been a good tool for us because the, um, because the tools are very, like the actual interface inside is very intuitive for clients to, uh, to kind of engage with. So it's, uh, it's been rare that we've had to say much of anything um, to get, um, get clients started. It's kind of, yeah. Once you show them that they can make a, you know, make a post-it, then, then they're off and running. And then, you know, they start to get adventurous and they want to draw a little bit. Um, or, you know, they'll start using the arrows. But for the most part, the even just like placing post-its will get you most, get you most of the information that you need. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think. Do you, have you found that your clients generally like using the tool? Like, do they see this as, as kind of a, 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 you know, in a sense, it's kind of you providing them a more, you know, a more higher level of service. I mean, just providing them a tool so that they can do it really uh, pretty efficiently. Uh, generally, do you find that or do you still have clients who are like, yeah, I think once we've had an, an engagement with a client that has used this tool, we've seen it kind of spin off where we've been on calls where there's another agent delivering a service and the client will say, well, can't we just post it on the, whatever that's the cicada thing was. And I was like, all right, in truth, it's not ours. <laughs> it's a, it's this, you know, Stuart has built this, up. it's called Review Studio and uh, it is a, it's a useful tool and I recommend um, you guys would use it too, but um, yeah, it, it uh, it's fun. Like once the once clients have used it, um, yeah. they'll uh, they're usually quite excited to kind of continue reviewing in this format. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe this is a good. I I don't know if there are questions. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, if, I'm I'm here. Uh, I'm gonna get my audio oh. on. Okay. Am I on, Christian? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hi. I think I, I just realized, I think my mute was on. You probably heard me talking the whole time, huh? Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, I did hear, yes, we heard you talking. I'm sorry Our, about that. I hope I didn't distract you too much. No. Um, yeah, okay, so what I would like to, uh, I, I have a question. I don't see any questions from the audience, but I have a question uh, because it was something you guys discussed. Um, just just now actually what what is the learning curve on this for if you because you know if you you're using the system and you have to have someone else come on and uh, try to figure out uh, how to use it have you found that this is a relatively quick process for people to understand what they're supposed to do in my experience i would say yes because typically we will have a kickoff phone call yeah and and essentially they open this link and you just show them if you use this post-it tool, you click on the screen, a little text box will show up and you can say, you know, whatever you feel like. Um, <laughs> um, and then you press enter and then you show them that that comment has been registered. It, it's added to the queue. And at that point, you know, I'm going to assign it and say, yeah. you know, this is an urgent issue. Ilya, I want you to deal with this today. Like, Right. You I mean, chop, chop. I, I think speaking as a as the developer, because this has always been like a real uh, a real goal for us. I mean, there are a lot of marketing platforms out there that you know are are incredibly robust and incredibly complex. Uh, you know that have all these sort of automated workflows, and you know the you know and the problem is especially when you're dealing with creative teams. Is that they, you know, they add, they overlay so much process that nobody uses them, and and so they just don't get used. Right. So, you know, I think the challenge for us is to like really bring it down to, you know, what is the real core workflow that people need, and to keep that organization, you know, really simple. And uh, yeah. you know, it has to be something that the team and that the, uh, you know, that the clients and that the owners. You know, like using. Uh, if it isn't something people like to use, then it, you know, they're just gonna like find some other way to do it. So it's it's really important. I know, uh, you know, we've had people, you know, refer to us as kind of the Goldilocks solution because it it's you know we we really try to provide all the kind of essential, you know, critical functionality and yet you know not let it get too, uh, you know, too complex of a, a you know too overladen with process. Um, yeah, because I, so, yeah. I, I, I think that that would be one of those issues that you would run into, you know, when you have to, when, when you have to uh, introduce something new to someone. But that sounds good. I mean, that sounds like a, yeah. uh, you've thought about that, of course, as well. Uh, yeah. You, there, somebody did have a question here. Uh, they said, it looks useful. Is there a trial or is there just a monthly fee? Do you have a trial available? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, well, if you go to our website at reviewstudio.com, yes, uh, uh, I guess uh, there is, you know, for sure there's a 15 day trial, but if people need, you know, more time than that, we're pretty flexible with it. But, uh, and also like, I mean, I know I've been talking about it and, and Spencer's been talking about it, but, you know, if, if any agency uh, watching, you know, wants a more thorough demo, I, I and I do advise that, I, I would be happy. <laughs> I generally, you know, it, it's interesting because I'm the product director. You know, I, I'm one of the founders, but I'm also the generally my my major role is uh, product director. Yeah, and uh, I like to do the demos because I find that's like the best way for me to connect with the people who are interested in it and and the customers. So well, that's how I, we first met. <laughs> yeah, no, so, exactly. And that so was I a... make a point. So anybody watching, and you know, if they wanted to go into like more detail. I definitely would like encourage that. There's a, a way to set up a demo on our website as well, uh, you know, just to schedule it and you know spend an hour. And and then you know we could talk a little more uh, specifically about your studio, how your studio works. Um, there's a lot of other things we can get into, like just the integrations, uh, APIs that we have. So I mean, there's you know there are large agencies that have you know basically using our system and integrating it with other platforms. Right. So, yeah. There's options like you know there's there's different options but you know we we have plans that go from like a single freelance plan you know up to the agency plan and our pricing i think is uh you know really good okay I mean, compared to some other platforms good. 
there, say that, but we, we, we are really, you know, very conscious. I mean, people are working under, you know, budgets is it's, it's an issue of really providing good value mm -hmm. and making sure that you get a good return. But at the end of the day, you know, like I said, at the beginning, it's, you know, the whole idea here is, um, to make your life easier so that you're not, you know, having to struggle, uh, with these issues of, of communications and, and, you know, just keeping everybody on the same page, just keeping the team, the clients, you know, just reduces friction, keeps the projects just moving smoothly. Uh, All right. And, you know, that, that, that's kind of the core value there. So perfect. But yeah, please do the can trial. I, and can I, I have another question that was from a little bit earlier for Spencer uh, when you were talking about, um, you know, when you're doing iterations and things like that, how, how, how easy does the software or the, the, the service make it to, um, you know, to separate that so that you're always sure that you are all talking about the, the right uh, thing, you know, at the same time? If you know yeah, what I, I mean, like that you don't get overlapped on, on, on things. Yeah, generally what we'll do, if it's a new, a brand new engagement, we'll send them, uh, we'll send them a link that's just a closed review uh, of, uh, you know, the active content. And when they open it, it would be like this. You'd see some thumbnails and they can move through it. And usually we'll have a kickoff call just to make sure everyone's comfortable yeah. and no one's frustrated with the reviews. Just a little bit of hand holding at the beginning. And after that, they're, they're usually good. Um, then as you, as you start to have, you know, one or two engagements with them, you can start to show some of the iterations like Stuart was showing where there's a version, an early version, a late version. You can put them side by each, but usually with a, with a first engagement, we try to make sure that there's no misunderstanding whatsoever, that this is, right. a, this is the current, just use the current link. We'll actually remove the old version in many cases with a first engagement, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And then, um, unless you, unless you see that they're, uh, you know, a, a savvy client and you said, there's actually some great features here. We can review what has been done, um, against what, where we are today. Um, because, you know, you kind of want to show them where, where the path has gone and all of this, all of the work that you have done. Sometimes you close that down and they feel like you're just hiding it from them and <laughs> they start to <laughs> miss you know, there's a balance there to be struck because yeah, uh, in in creating these reviews, you're also producing this record that said we've had an agreement that we're going to do three iterations within this month in order to achieve your timeline. As you can see, we've we've had a full review on this date. We had another review on this date, and now we're in and the third can, and final, and, and I, that's where we're. At. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can track that, right? Like you showed, sometimes you could show things right next to each other. So you could look at something from the previous, uh, the previous uh, revision and look at the newer revision side by side or something like that, right? Yeah, that's correct. So the, so you, and uh, you can track ver um, individual versions of a, of a particular image mm -hmm. uh, or video. Um, video, often I, um, I won't put them side by side because okay. the timeline slips as as the story changes so comparing you know, the 30 second mark to the 30 second mark of a new version um often the title's been shortened by a second and now everything's like out of sync oh, yeah okay i understand yeah you know, rather than putting a little buffer in the beginning to get it to sync we'll just say right please see the video um as uh and you can refer back to the old one um but I, I wouldn't put, I, I don't typically put them side by side just because the, um, it's rare that the, the timeline remains so uh, fixed. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have, I do have, uh, there was someone else asked a question and it, it's, a, it's a good one. Um, do you have, is the tool available in other languages? Like for instance, when a client, if a client doesn't speak English, yeah, actually, uh, what we uh, so we don't have the um, <clears throat> we don't have the whole application localized like that, but the the part that you're looking at the review canvas itself, 
the yes. part that really the clients are working on. We actually have localized that into, I think right now, French, uh, Portuguese, and uh, and uh, German. Okay. Um, right, those three. We're always, you know, we can always add more languages. We just have to, like, um, <laughs> often it's, uh, we work with one of our customers on, on the localizations. Okay. We, we are, we do have, uh, it can support different languages on on the review the part that the clients are working on but the the primary application with the dashboard where that uh, spencer was showing earlier is still just uh, in english okay okay but but it sounds like that could be eventually done yeah. if the market is calling for it right like, oh yeah. yeah no we're yeah. actually planning on that in fact uh you know pretty soon we're going to just localize the whole application but we felt like uh, at least to get things started, because we did have customers requesting that. We wanted to at least uh, get the uh, canvas, the review canvas part. Yes. Uh, localized, so. Yes. Um, okay. I, there's another question. Um, it, the, the question is, is there any kind of calendar that you can check to see how many reviews are left or some specific important dates that are marked? Uh, there is not a calendar view. Um, I think you can check if there are deadlines in the, uh, well, I guess I would have to, I mean, if you go back to your oh, dashboard. Here, you want to share? I can, I can switch to share. No. Um, so, oh, I guess I can, uh, yeah, but I don't know if I have, uh, let's see. Okay. Back here. But if I go back and like to the to the dashboard, so I mean, you can indicate deadlines and you can search, you know, you can filter your dashboard to show uh, the deadlines and reviews by deadline. So, you okay, can kind yeah. of, you see. know, you can sort where you have milestones in the reviews in the dashboard, but it's not uh, a specific calendar view uh, that I guess is what he's asking about. Now, one of the things you can do uh, is and, and clients have done this is uh, I mentioned we have an API. We have support for Zapier. I don't know if people are familiar with Zapier as well, which is sort of an API integrator. So, you know, with Zapier, uh, yeah, know, there's I've basically of, I've like, heard of uh, this. You can make, it's like if, when, so if Zapier then. basically lets you automate workflows. And, you know, yeah. there's like 1,500 different apps here. So it's like you just set these tricks. So you can, you, you actually, and it, it's, it's actually kind of fun <laughs> to use. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, uh, you just kind of, it's like sort of this, if then do that kind of thing. So, and like I said, there's like 2000 apps. Okay. So like every, anything you might want here, can you, you want to put your, your, if you wanted to put those deadlines into your Gmail calendar or, you know, into anything, you, right. know, you can just create these apps. Can, I, saw, uh, so, I saw it integrates with Spotify. If the client like a fi does the final approval, can you make it play celebration on Spotify for instance? <laughs> you, you probably could yes <laughs> uh, i mean because that sounds that. like fun you know <laughs> we, we haven't tried that one yet but yes <laughs> all kinds of uh interesting uh things so that that's this is this is kind of cool uh and a lot of people like this and use that so uh, that's an option so and and you know we do have people who are using jira trello Right. You know, they are they are using these other project management tools. So, you know, typically you'll, you know, like I said, like these tools tend to be good for very high level project management, like in terms of like big milestones, you know, big tasks. So generally in something like Trello, there might be a card that says, you know, you know, it's like sort of like the review stage. So right. we've set it up so, you know, you can have some content. You can say, okay, I'm, it's moving into the review stage. And then it just, you know, puts it'll automatically create a review studio review put the link into the trello ticket so i mean it basically you can carry forward from uh you know these applications uh, you know because you know all these like what 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 spencer was showing like the hundreds of little changes that need to be made well you don't really want to set those up as you know tasks in jira necessarily i mean you'll just yeah. you know it's not really designed for that level of of refinement so it's nice like you you can work with you know you can you can start to integrate and combine uh, different apps and, and that's actually something we work with our clients on we support that so if somebody is interested in that 
uh, you know, that's something we, we can talk about and we provide support for that. Great. I, I, uh, that was uh, the last question was from uh, Rose there, who is a good friend of ours and she, she's worked, she has a company in uh, Barcelona and she said, awesome, oh. thank you. She wrote, uh, thanks <laughs> for the answer. Well, we have a development team in, uh, Lis in, in uh, Lisbon. So in Portugal, that is, okay. <laughs> well, so that, that is why we have Portuguese as one of our other. Ah, we interesting. A, yeah, that makes uh, sense. Developers you have a... here in Montreal and, uh, and developers in Portugal too. So, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, if she wants uh, Spanish, you know, let's, uh, let's work that out. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you could get somebody, get some help uh, with uh, with that. Because, yeah, we um, yeah. um, But uh, I don't see any more questions at the moment. Do you, do you guys right. have more to, uh, did you want to uh, explain? I didn't want to interrupt you, well, uh, what I, you were talking I, uh, about. I, I think we're, we're um, am I still sharing? I guess I am, right? I don't want to end with, uh, should end with something nice. Um, well, okay, but, uh, that's where maybe the... So one thing I don't think we had called out were uh, how you would annotate the internal versus uh, external reviews with the labels. Oh, yeah. If you want to look at that, or I can show that in your dashboard if I... Uh, if I yeah, you know yeah, no, that, that, that actually, that was a feature we didn't really get into. But yeah, you can create labels. Uh, and again, you know, if you, if you sort of look at the settings under uh, labels, so... A lot of clients will use this like Cicada to basically track what stage. So um, <clears throat> you can see here, uh, you know, if the, the, this dashboard is sort of, sort of showing like a running list of all the reviews, but in, in any specific project, um, like the Lakeview one, I guess, uh, was it CM4? Uh, you know, as you're moving through this, so this was one where they're actually creating uh, separate reviews for the internal versus the client, right? So they create an internal, they, they, you can put a label on it. And that just is a way, you know, just like of uh, indicating what stage that's at. It's just, and you can have as many labels uh, as you want as just other ways of categorizing some of the reviews. So in this case, uh, after the internal version one, it could move into a client round. And then after the client, I guess, uh, finishes, it could go back to like an internal version two. Uh, and then there could be a client round three or, you know, so it basically, it's just, and, and what's nice about that, I guess, is that often in a, in a contract, you know, you're gonna tell your, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, agencies will say, look, you know, our contract is going to allow you to have two rounds of revisions. So it's very, you know, it's put right out there in front to say, okay, this is your second, but here's your first round. It's now finished, it's locked. Uh, here's your second round, and and if it continues into round three, well, okay, well you you know it could, but you know you have the option there of saying, look, you got to be charged more. Uh, so I think it's important and 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 valuable in that way is is uh, it's in keeping the accountability and and keeping client you know keeping everybody accountable really. I mean it's keeping the team accountable, it's keeping your clients accountable, uh, you know it's just keeping it really upfront. And uh, it, it kind of makes it easy for you to do that because you can just say, it's very clear that this is a round and this is a round. So you get the two rounds and, and uh, you put the labels on. And, um, well, I think the other, the other benefit of having the like active reviews um, kind of uh, homepage is you can see what still needs doing because we typically have a, these days we've been having a daily meeting but at the very in at the very least um in other studios there's been a weekly meeting of what it is that we're, we're trying to accomplish this week and so having this dashboard of what's what is still active um and kind of walking through from top to bottom um you get a very good sense of you know what what needs doing from a creative standpoint of course there's you know the business side, which is totally different around, you know, how you're managing cash flow <laughs> right. um, on the, on the side of what it is that the, you know, needs to be addressed this week. Um, you can see the, you've got the time markers um, indicating when we need to close these responses and um, which ones still have uh, revisions required. Yeah. Um, you can, if you hover over the label, 
you know, more information about, you know, how many approvers there are, how many, so in this case, this is new, nothing's happened here. Whoever is supposed to approve hasn't done anything yet. They're still pending. This one, uh, you know, there were, there was an approver, he's approved two, one is pending, five were rejected. So the, the status of that review is revisions required, but the, the dashboard is giving you a lot of information about how many tasks. So when you log in as a user, if you want to see, you know, just show me where I have tasks, you click that filter and it's just going to show you the reviews where you have open tasks. So you can, or where, if you're an approver, where do you have approvals pending? So you can really jump, jump pretty quickly to see, you know, where you have some work to do um, and, yeah. you know, where, where there are deadlines pending. So, you know, that's just another way of, of managing, uh, keeping track of what's going on. Um, well, it's kind of interesting what? because you can look at it from the kind of global view and the individual view. So even as a junior modeler, you can come in and say, here are all the tasks that I'm responsible for doing this week. I don't actually need to touch base with anybody else or you know, deal with my creative director until I kind of run this list. Then you can also structure your approvals internally to say, okay, we have a project lead who's gonna be responsible for internally approving everything before we uh, send this back out to the, to the client. We need to make sure we're doing our quality assurance quality control. So like we need the, the studio director to sign off on all of this before we post again. Um, right. And you can set that deadline a day before, you know, your actual client deadline. Um, and then when you post it out to the client, then, you know, they become the approver. Um, right. if, if they're an active user and, and are confirming, but at least that gives you a good paper trail that you, you know, you officially approved this. It was, you signed off on this at the end of phase two. Right. And, and the sharing is actually, you know, it's very flexible. So you have this menu where, you know, you have your team uh, and, you know, you can add and remove specific people at any time. So once, like you said, if you get client feedback and then you basically want to work on it internally, you can stop sharing it with the client. So at one stage, maybe the client is the approver and you're looking for the client to approve. Uh, and then after you get the feedback from the client, maybe you stop sharing it with the client, you share it with your internal team. Maybe there's an internal approver at that point, you know, the, the project director before it's shared back to the client. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's very flexible uh, as far as the sharing goes. Um, you also have this option to share with guests, which uh, a lot of people use. Like sometimes you're, you're sharing, you know, maybe at your client, there's a, a point person, but the client says, uh, well, you know, I have like five people here I'd like to share this with. Can, can I share it? Can you add users? Well, you don't want to really start spending money on more users. So you can allow guest access. And then anybody, you know, that, that client can share uh, with anybody in their organization. You don't have to bother setting up users. They could even be approvers. You could have a password or not, you know, if you want to keep it really easy. So that's again, you know, just more flexibility in terms of uh, how you, you know, how you can share and these reviews. Well, I think that like, so, you know, even with all that hierarchy that you can put in there, I think one of the reasons why we really like this tool is that you don't have to set up all of those rules in order to create a review. So the, there's kind of twofold. One is a very easy adoption where I can just load pictures and send a link. And it can be totally un, unstructured in a way, and you can just get on the phone with the client and, and jump right into the weeds. On the other hand, if you know you have a particularly um, finicky and detail-oriented client, and you're gonna have to structure that conversation to the T, the tools are also here for you to really lock them down at each, uh, at each moment and say, I, you know, having dealt with you before, and I know you appreciate the clarity and I'm going to lay out a review structure for you. Every time you approve something, we're going to do it and you can keep track of it all here and you'll see, uh, you know, that I will have a checklist of things that you have approved and I'll remind you of the things that uh, you haven't addressed yet uh, or haven't reviewed. Um, because without those decisions from you, we can't proceed to the next stage of production. Yeah, I I was I just had my Great. audio come well, back on so I could. Wow, I think we actually went oh. uh, 
we sort of compromised. We yeah. didn't take the flowers. <laughs> but we made it halfway in between, but that's that's cool. That's good. No, uh, but I, that, I really, that was extremely helpful. That that was exactly the kind of things that I was wondering about, and I think other people as well are were were happy to hear that. I'm really impressed with this software. I, I really uh, I. Yeah. I, I wish that I was working in an environment where I could really use it because I personally can't really use it, but <laughs> I would re it looks like it's a really great uh, uh, tool. Um, and I hope that the people out there watching, uh, if they feel the same way, everybody seems to be interested in it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, did you want to say something else? No, I just wanted to thank Spencer for actually joining in. I know he was up early this morning at 5 a.m. doing a, a site uh, doing a shoot. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, no, I, I, I wanted to be here where just to be clear, like, I, um, we're not getting any kickback or anything from this from Stuart. This is like, uh, <laughs> genuinely a product that we use, um, and have enjoyed. It's been a very easy to, to, uh, to kind of engage with clients. And, um, you know, I recommend other studios give it a try. Yeah, I mean, we do have a lot of, uh, CGI, you know, a lot of uh, studios, agencies uh, working with us. And uh, like I said, you know, just um, now I'd love to be able to like go in more detail with anybody uh, if you want to go to our website and just do it, set up a demo or take a trial. Um, and uh, we can talk, you know, more specifically about your specific situation. So great. Well, I, I really did appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, I appreciate uh, you both being part of the D2. This is uh, this was a strange year, of course, for everyone. And, uh, you know, we were happy that we were able to actually make it happen again, even though uh, uh, it had to be online only. Um, could you stop sharing your screen now? And we'll go back oh, uh, to the, to the um, uh, yeah. all of us there. There, there we go. Okay, <laughs> now we're all on screen. Um, and I also urge everyone who is watching to take Stuart up on his offer and to contact him if you're interested in the software because I did a, I did a um, uh, uh, he did a demo for me and it was great and I, I really understood uh, what was going on there after doing that with him uh, so I would urge you to do that if you are interested uh, also thank you Spencer for taking the time out to do this uh, with uh, Stuart because I know that you know time is precious and uh, it, the the fact that you enjoy the software so much is the best uh, the best uh, review you can have right that is the well, best I endorsement almost, best endorsement yeah I would say almost ironically it's um even though like these days with COVID like, it's hard to get off the phone <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the things that I that's been useful about this is being able to send reviews to clients and say, you know, make your annotations whenever and uh, send me an email when you're done. We don't need to, we don't need to get on the phone. Right. Um, and that, uh, it, that time saving is actually been uh, almost critical these days. Like even as we're stock talking now, I'm getting pinged to jump in another call. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you better go take that. I know. Yeah, Find production time is, uh, is almost one of the most valuable uh, offerings I think this uh, this has today. Great. Yeah, it does seem like a real time saver and it helps with efficiency and keeping people on the same page. Enjoy the rest of the conference, guys. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Appreciate so much it. for being here. So thank you. You guys, uh, can stick you, for, you guys can stick around for a moment. Uh, we'll sure. uh, end this uh, session and then we can say goodbye okay. properly, okay? Um, okay. Yeah. So, Fabio. Yeah, the, I think that this is a uh, this was a great presentation. People were very curious about it, also because it's like we've been fighting this one hundred year war with like clients <laughs> since uh, in the modern industrialization, <laughs> and so probably we have presented you guys with a viable solution, and I hope that you're gonna go and give our friends that review studio a look and again thanks a lot guys for putting your trust in us we're going to take a little break we're going to start the last day of the d2 online uh, in just a few minutes well actually 
No, no, an hour. hour and a half. So, an hour and a at, half. At 6 p.m. Central Eastern Standard Time. We're we'll in back. a dark room. We don't know what is happening. <laughs> There's no outside. light. Yeah, no, we have no windows. <laughs> <laughs> there could be the apocalypse out there. We'll it's like, be streaming. <laughs> it's like Vegas yeah, exactly. in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. We're going to take a break, and we'll see you in an hour and a half.